In the immortal words of Jerry Reed, the country singer who played snow Snowman and Smokey the Bandit, when you're hot, you're hot. And when you're not, well, you're not. I think he must have been thinking about Regeneron Pharmaceuticals, REGN, the biotech best known for ILEA, that's the revolutionary treatment for age-related macular degeneration. Regeneron CEO Dr. Leonard Slifer was one of our first CEOs on the show. I started recommending a stock in 2005. The stock was under five. And boy, was this thing hot, rallying to 543 at its highs earlier this year, giving you a hundred-fold gain. Not to mention being up 50% for, uh, for the 2017 at those levels. However, lately the stock's been humbled. So has the group. This one's plummeted over 25% from its peak in June. Why? Well, some of it is because biotech's going out of style on Wall Street. But some of this potential competition comes from Novartis. we got to find out about this. Even the strong quarter of Regeneron reported last week, and it was very strong, hasn't been enough to give its shares a sustained bounce. So is this an incredible buying opportunity in the stock of a company with an amazing long-term track record? Or should we proceed with caution? Let's take a closer closer look with Dr. Leonard Schleifer. He's the founder, president, and CEO of Regeneron Pharmaceuticals to get a better sense of how his company's doing. Dr. Schleifer, welcome back to Mad Money. Hey, Good to see you. Good to see Have you, a seat. Jim. How are you doing? All right, doctor, I'll tell you something. I don't like calling your company a biotech because there are very few major old line pharmaceuticals that have as many products on the market and in the pipeline. When is it no longer biotech and when is it a major? You know, that is a great question and they sort of morph together. We think when you're really in an innovative space, it's probably biotech. And when you're a little bit more mature out there with a little less innovation, perhaps it's pharma. They'll well, be a little mad at me now. But look at this. Uh, uh, Dupixit, this is uh, for serious eczema. But what's amazing, it's not just for that. Like many of your drugs, there are a lot of allergic diseases. This thing could have many different uses. You know, it's rare that you get a chance to change the way medicine is practiced. We think Dupixin might be able to change the way you practice medicine as when you're thinking about allergic diseases. Our first indication for the treatment of what we would call moderate to severe eczema, it's out there. It's, we're hearing great things about it. It's selling well. But I think it's just the first of many indications we can get. We've got terrific asthma data. We're going to try and get it approved uh, there uh, next year. We're looking at nasal polyps. We're looking at food allergies. The food allergies, by the way, when I saw that, when I, I said to myself, that may be the, one of the biggest, if not the biggest, unmet need for younger people. This is a huge market. You know, it's really interesting. Uh, on the way over here, I was looking at the history of allergic diseases. It was actually in the 70s, the 1870s, when allergic rhinitis started picking up, which was the first of the allergic diseases. But it was really in the 1980s or so uh, when you started to get the asthma epidemic, and then 1990s, all of a sudden, food allergy. When you and I went to, well, when I went to school, there was no <laughs> peanuts. Pretty close. There was no peanut. Uh, kids were not right, allergic to right. peanuts. Now you can't bring peanuts to school. You can't open them on the plane sometimes. It's really terrible what's going on. So we're trying, we're going to look at that. We're going to look at a lot of food allergies. Now, the immunology immuno oncology platform is one that we've never even spoken about, but it's substantial. Yeah, you know, immuno oncology, it's a big word, but what right. it, we, for your view is what that means, it's trying to get the, your own immune system, your own cells to t attack and kill cancer. So you don't have to take poisons and have all sorts of terrible side effects and not great efficacy. This is, there's been some great advance by a lot of companies out there. We've got a product that we hope will uh, get to market uh, next year in that space. Wow, that's quick. Uh, skin cancer? Yes, that's wow. for uh, bad skin cancer, what we call cutaneous squamous cell cancer. Oh, my God, no, cancer. millennial. I mean, millennials not yet, but older people. You know, my generation, that is your biggest fear when you go to the dermatologist. Absolutely. Now, Ilea, we should just speak about this. There's a lot of people, I, I don't know, maybe there's some people who just love the stock of Novartis. But to me, uh, the idea that they, somehow the stuff is better than expectations and could really present, as I read Credit Suisse, a competitive threat to Regeneron's Ilea and wet AMD, I'm not seeing it. Maybe I'm too much of a homer. I I don't know. I don't think this is anything near term to worry about. Well, you know, that's kind of you. Um, if you think about Ali, it's a pretty high bar to, to take on. Yeah. Uh, if you, uh, We're going to give probably two million injections of ILEA this year alone in the United States. And they're two years away, at least, from their first injection commercially. And we've got long-term data. We've got vision data. You know, it's funny, in their, uh, uh, in their uh, presentation, they sort of forgot what their primary endpoint was. <laughs> their primary endpoint was vision. And in that, while they were not different, so-called not inferior, we were actually numerically higher. Yeah. And, and it's like they forgot that. I think they're a little bit long on enthusiasm and short on data they, right they, now. Uh, they love to talk. 
Right. Well, they're very promotional. That's okay. Now, one of those things, probably, I'm saving for the best for last. Okay, so my cardiologist says that everyone in America, if not the world, should be taking your preluin. <laughs> he says that if in five years from now, we are going to see a major difference between those who take it and those who don't because the cholesterol level has to be dramatically lowered for everyone. It is very tough to grade these drugs over a very short per term period, isn't it? Yeah, and it's a, it's a real complication, uh, frankly, Sorry. in our in our healthcare system. The people who are paying for it, uh, they don't necessarily have the incentive to keep you going 10 years yes, down the road. Right, but, but it's going to be that. I mean, look, my guy Ben Lewis is just saying, Jim, I want you on this, but I can't just, the insurance company, no one realizes right. how great it's going to be because it's going to take too long. But it is going to be life or death for a lot of people. Well, I think it has the uh, potential of really making a difference to a lot of people who have high cholesterol that right. you can't control with statins. Right. Statins are really good. And if you can take a statin and get your cholesterol really low, that's fine and they're really cheap. But if you can't get there and you've got heart disease mm -hmm. and maybe like you, uh, Probably it's not a bad alternative. No, it sure isn't. You've done a great job. That's Dr. Leonard Slifer. the founder, president, and CEO of General Pharmaceuticals. Perhaps our number one recommendation since we started Mad Money. We're back in for the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.